Hello everyone. Today we'll be studying future of food, food sustainability for 8 billion populace. Introduction. In the words of Malthus, a famous population geographer. So who was Malthus? A famous population geographer. Population increases in a geometric progression. That is 2, 4, 6, 132, 16, 132. So there is a multiplication factor to it. While food production increases in arithmetic progression, that is 2, 4, 6, 8. So with the global population recently passing 8 billion, governments across the globe face the challenge of further increasing food production without exaggerating environmental degradation, soil health and climate crisis. Additionally, as the population is projected to reach 10 million by 2050, a better understanding of how a diverse range of food system functions is critical in ensuring sustainable food security. So the statement here worth remembering is that Malthus, a famous population geographer said that population increases in a geometric fashion. Geometric progression. while food production increases in an arithmetic progression. Moving on. The sustainability of food security is also being influenced from the demand side. With changing lifestyles and increasing imprint of technology, consumer behavior is also increasingly focusing on healthy, hygienic and nutritionist diet for their overall well-being. In this context, we will discuss about what is a sustainable food system, what are the emerging challenges to global food systems, what measures have been taken to address the challenges, how technology is impacting the food systems, what is the way ahead to build resilient food systems for future. So these are the questions we will be addressing today in this session. So what is a sustainable food system? Sustainable food system, SFS, is a food system that delivers food security and nutrition for all without compromising the need of future generation in such a way that it is profitable throughout economic sustainability, broad based benefits for society, social sustainability and positive or neutral impact on environment, environmental sustainability. So importance of sustainable food system. Economic sustainability, we have jobs, income, food affordability, commercial viability and profits, competitiveness and tax revenues. Then social sustainability, we have public health and nutrition, equitable value distribution, culture tradition and social norms, livelihoods and communities, occupational health and safety, inclusiveness, education and skills, food safety, animal welfare. Then in environmental sustainability, we have animal and plant health, biodiversity and ecosystem services, climate change mitigation, carbon footprint and air quality, water health and footprint, soil health and land use. Okay. So by combining social sustainability and economic sustainability, we get inclusive growth. By combining economic sustainability and environmental sustainability, we get green growth. And social sustainability and environmental sustainability, we get ecological and sociological progress. And all these together combined, we get SFS, that is Sustainable Food System. Food systems compass the entire range of factors and the interlinked value-adding activities involved in the production aggregation, processing, distribution, consumption and disposal of food products that originate from agriculture, forestry or fisheries. It is composed of subsystems, farming system, waste management system, input supply system and interacts with other key systems like energy system, trade system, health system etc. Structural change in the food system can originate from a change in another system, for example, a policy promoting more biofuels will have a significant impact on the food system. 
there are different types of food systems conventional food system maximum production lower consumer cost and provide safe and reliable food products alternative food system dynamic structures of food production distribution acquisition and consumption it includes local organic food systems etc so uh, in local food system refers to food distribution by small uh, smaller scale farmers who sell directly to consumers or to nearby restaurants and uh, grocery stores in organic food system farmers and food handlers avoid using artificial agrochemical inputs including pesticides synthetic fertilizers etc now food system we have recycling management and recovery of waste waste utilization and recovery in production we have farmers organic farming agro ecological farm seed production etc processing food preservation storage product development etc distribution retailing transportation network grocery stores cooperatives in consumption we have consumption habits responsible consumption nutrition consumption awareness global food system sustainable development goals sdgs un food system summit 2021 was convened as a part of the decade of action to achieve sdgs by 2030 it was guided by five action tracks that is nourish all people boost nature based solutions advance equitable livelihoods decent work in empowered communities build resilience to vulnerabilities shocks and stresses and support means of implementation it aims to launch new actions to deliver progress in all 17 sdgs and plan to transform the way world produces and consumes food so here the one thing we have to remember is un food system summit happened in 2021 as a part of decade of action to achieve sdgs by 2030 okay food security and nutrition and sustainable development goals so what are the parameters first what are the sdgs we are talking about we know we might not remember them but we must know it uh, you know overall on a peripheral level but if we can remember it that will be really awesome because it's it's cool to write it down in mains the first one is no poverty good nutrition results in higher labor productivity greater mental mental capacity and larger healthier lives second is zero hunger very important then third is good health and well being fourth is quality education without a sufficient nutritionist diet learning ability and focus are greatly impaired and gender equality affordable and clean energy clean water sanitation decent work in economic growth industry innovation and infrastructure reduced inequality then is sustainable cities and communities responsible consumption and production climate action life below water life on land peace justice partnership for the goals okay so what are the emerging challenges to global food systems current food system is rife with inequalities and other issues this is hampering our food security alongside impacting the environment negatively the integrity and security of food is of increasing concern due to challenges which exist within food system these include environmental challenges climate change extreme climate and weather events like increase in temperature changes in precipitation patterns etc all result in reduced food production with far reaching influences on crops livestock fisheries etc According to the study by Cornell University, climate change has reduced farming productivity by 21% since 1961. This is a fact worth remembering. If we can quote Cornell University, well and good. If we cannot, we must just remember the fact that uh, according to Cornell University
climate change has reduced farming productivity by 21% since 1961 it's a huge deal now creating a sustainable food secure food future by 2050 okay how do we how do we feed 10 billion people so uh, we will need 56% more food to feed nearly 10 billion people in 2050 without using more land so we need to prevent agriculture from expanding we currently use 50% of the world's vegetable vegetated land for agriculture to save an area of forest nearly two times the size of india we can lower the emissions with innovative technology like improved foods plant based burgers and resilient crop breeds we really have to think it through now crop damage in india over 30 339 lakh hectares of crop area were lost due to hydrometeorological calamities like cyclones cloud bursts droughts etc during 2015-16 to 2021-22 risk of pests and diseases pests and diseases reduce crop productivity compromise sustainability reduce food availability and affect the quality of production india has faced major invasive pest and weed attacks for instance fall army worm destroyed almost the entire maize crop in 2018 in india had to import maize in 2018 for army worm destroyed maize and as a result india had to import maize also locust attacks in the country damaged at least 2 lakh hectares of crop across 10 states in last 2 years yeah locust attacks were also there and they were quite brutal environmental externalities agriculture is a major contributor to pollution in many regions of the world through the use of synthetic input for instance intensive pesticide and fertilizer use has resulted in the accumulation of organic pollutants in the region's soils and eutrophication in water in china's yunnan province okay biodiversity loss FAO's state of the world's biodiversity for food and agriculture report food and agriculture organizations state of the world's biodiversity for food and agriculture report points to decreasing plant diversity in fields rising number of livestock breeds at risk of extinction and increasing proportion of overfished fish stocks out of 6000 plant species cultivated for food fewer than 200 contribute to global food output and only 9 account for 66% of total crop production this shows lack of diversity and we need diversity because uh, through crop rotation the soil gets enriched otherwise it will get depleted in one nutrition for a long period of time out of nearly 7800 breeds of livestock reportedly globally 26% are at risk of extinction nearly a third of fish stocks are overfished more than half are reached the sustainable limit deforestation agriculture is one of the biggest drivers of deforestation farmland expansion is responsible for 90% of deforestation around the world which in turn hurts the food production of existing farmland i know we never want to talk about it but it's a fact that farmland expansion is responsible for 90% of 
deforestation and what is the alternative to it that we need to increase the food the productivity of the land that we are already cultivating because if we cannot increase the productivity we are just wasting more and more land by cutting down forest for farming now social economic change challenges poor agricultural practices indiscriminate use of chemical waste inputs like fertilizers pesticides herbicides etc have led to groundwater contamination and soil degradation monoculture cropping has led to increased success uh, successibility sorry susceptibility yes susceptibility of farms to pests and pathogens has increased susceptibility of farms to pests and pathogens as there is no native plant stopping the pest from destroying the crops as per study by council of en- council on energy environment and water ceew less than 4% of indian farmers have adopted sustainable agricultural practices and systems that is the reality we are living in that less than 4% of indian farmers have adopted sustainable agricultural practice and it is as per ceew ceew is council on energy environment and water okay then increased biofuel production increased devolution of agricultural land to produce food based biofuels has resulted in global displacement of people and rise in food prices yeah when we talk about biofuel production it looks nice that we will be using food for fuel but that has a negative downside to it that we will be devoting agricultural land for food based biofuels which has resulted in global displacement of people and rise in food prices for example large land allocations in tanzania have been reported as involving the displacement of local farmers that is the kind of impact each small step we take is happening we wanted reducing climate change but we might end up doing more harm than good right we have to be really careful in what we are implementing what we are projecting to our future generations okay so what are the emerging challenges to global food systems environmental environmental externalities bad biodiversity loss deforestation risk of pests and diseases crop damage climate change social economic challenges poor agricultural practices rapid urbanization consumption pattern increased biofuel production supply side issues and population and then global challenges supply disruption wto trade distortions so this is an important chart if we remember this we can write in a balanced answer to it okay then uh, this is because of the incentives to produce biofuels have raised the global competition for land this has made it harder for small farmers to compete or maintain control of their property now supply side issues institutional gaps in the supply chain for instance dependence on apmc markets in india lack of focus on quality and safety standards impact supply of food items and production of value added products then population due to constant increase in population every year the food system faces challenges regarding producing adequate amounts of food to feed the entire humanity rapid urbanization as it is continues to grow water key resource for agricultural production is becoming scarcer water is becoming scarcer 
and often wasted because of excessive domestic and industrial use thereby endangering food supplies in developing countries poor urban dwellers are thus at risk of consuming insufficient and low quality food including street food which may be unhygienic exposing them to health risk then consumption pattern over consumption inadequate distribution through public distribution system and food waste put unnecessary pressure on the food system one in three people suffer from malnutrition that is wasting stunting and underweight which is micronutrient deficiency and food wastage is common across all stages of food chain nearly 13.8% of food is lost in supply chains from harvesting to transport to storage to processing what is the mega trend nutrition consumer behavior challenges the idea of sustainable nutrition is becoming embedded into all innovation by food producers and decision making consumers this mega trend refers to nutrition that is produced and delivered in a way that is mindful for people the plant and society this means an increased focus on sustainable farming and sourcing practices closed loop supply chains finding health and nutrition value in waste streams as well as development of solutions to feed populations in need with obesity and stress rising in a tech oriented world the food systems must cater to this consumer behavior by striving towards customized tailor made diets what are the mega trend sustainable nutrition plants based future botanical boom food cognitive and sleep microbiome beyond digestive health body positive weight management nutrition accountability amplified immune health personalized nutrition technology and the future of food active aging okay what are the global challenges supply disruption shocks to global supply chain that manifested in the latest ukraine russia crisis has led to global food inflation this related dependency on food assistance is affecting the access to and affordability of food also ban on wheat export by india led to spike in global wheat prices we can mention it ban on wheat wheat export by india led to spike in global wheat prices wto trade distortions trade distortions are arising out of the steps taken and imposed by wto and its members on agricultural exports for example european union import tolerance maximum residual level mrl of 0.01 ppm for the majority of pesticides these trade measures could adversely affect agricultural imports from india and other developing countries to eu okay uh, then non tariff barriers imposition of non tariff barriers like sanitary and phytosanitary conditions on imports from developing countries for example usa restriction on mangoes import due to packaging norms imposed by usa usa restriction on mangoes due to packaging norms imposed by us what are the impacts of covid-19 pandemic on food and nutrition in order to contain spread of covid-19 pandemic governments have imposed restrictions on mobility temporary closures of market private and government organizations this impacted all aspects of food systems from production distribution and storage to food environments consumption and waste 
food production and distribution pandemic impacted food production as crop live livestock and fishery have been hit hard impact on livestock farming is due to limited access to animal feed and shortage of labor travel ban affected the delivery of breeding stock of poultry such disruptions reduced food exports and imports in global market food demand and food security demand of food has been affected due to reduction in income and purchasing capacity consumers were stockpiling the foods which in turn has affected the food availability and prices consumption of animal protein decreased due to misleading perception of animal as a reservoir of virus leading to food insecurity food insecurity affected poorest and most vulnerable segments of population at present 820 million people are facing chronic hunger and 100 million 113 million are facing acute severe insecurity across the globe many nations announced a slew of measures to tackle the situation india also announced a series of measures to support the country's most vulnerable population in food security of their citizens prime minister garib kalyan anna yojana it provides 5 kg of free food grains rice wheat or combination of both per person per month and 1 kg of free pulses per family per month to 80 crore beneficiary registers under nfsc 2030 so one is prime minister garib kalyan anna yojana pm g k a y 5 kg of free food grain per person per month 1 kg of free pulses per family per month okay pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana second is atma bharat scheme it provides 5 kg of free food grains per person per month and 1 kg of free whole gram per family per month to migrant laborers stranded and needy families who are not covered under nfsa 2030 so this was for covered under national food security act 2013 aur dusra tha atmanirbhar bharat scheme not under national food security act 2013 and these were migrant workers needy person and stranded people uh, they uh, were provided 5 kg of free food grain per person per month and 1 kg of free whole grain per family per month then digital transformation of public distribution system national informatics center nic has developed software applications that have been made available to all states and union territories these applications include modules for procurement food stock reporting ration card management and fair price shop automation etc now what measures have been taken to address the challenges associated with food system to address the above challenges with respect to food system and ensure nutrition security in the nation several initiatives have been taken both at national and global level national level production wise we have national mission for sustainable agriculture nmsa it addresses the risk associated with climate change by devising adaptation and mitigation strategies for ensuring food security equitable access to food resources and enhancing livelihood opportunities it is one of the eight missions 
within the national action plan on climate change then climate smart agriculture csa csa is an integrated approach of managing landscapes cropland livestock forest and fisheries that addresses the interconnected challenges of food security and rapid climate change under sensor based smart agriculture sense agri project in india drones would be used for monitoring soil and crop health collecting precious information and transferring the data to farmers on a real time basis india digital ecosystem for agriculture ida framework it aims to build a national digital agriculture ecosystem and elevate agriculture to higher levels of efficiency and productivity and improve the welfare of and income of farmers national food security mission nfsm it is a centrally sponsored scheme that was launched by government of india through national development and council 2007 it aims to improve the production and productivity of wheat rice and pulses on a sustainable basis through productivity enhancement restoring soil fertility and productivity and enhancing farm level economy also it helps to raise farmers income through enhanced technologies in farm management practices and ensure food security in the country integrated schemes in oil seeds pulses palm oil and maize isopo integrated scheme on oil seeds pulses and palm oil and maize it is a centrally sponsored scheme and implemented by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare to increase production of oil seeds including soybean in the country three pillars of climate smart agriculture helps farmers build resilience to adapt to climate change sustainably increase agricultural production and income and reduces greenhouse gases where possible processing mega food park scheme implemented by ministry of food production industries mo fpi to boost food production sector by adding value and reducing food wastage at each stage of the supply chain with particular focus on perishables production linked incentive scheme for food producing and product processing industry pli sfpi it aims to support the creation of global food manufacturing champions promote indian food product brands increase employment opportunities for of farm jobs and ensure remunerative prices of farm produce and high income to farmers it is a centrally sector scheme launched by ministry of food production uh, food processing industry then foreign direct investment 100% fdi is permitted under automatic route in food product uh, processing industry and 100% fdi under government approval route is allowed for retail trading including through e-commerce in respect to food product manufactured or produced in india okay so 100% fdi in automatic route in food processing sector then 100% fdi under government approval route for retail trading including e-commerce okay food irradiation centers india and russia signed a pact to set up 25 integrated infrastructure centers for irradiation treatments of perishables food items to improve shelf life and cut forest harvests losses in irradiation food products are subjected to a low doses of radiation to treat them for germs and insects Okay, increasing their longevity. They do that. So India plus Russia signed food 
irradiation centers <laughs> to treat perishables and improve their shelf life okay now rations given under pds antodaya anna yojana give 35 kg ration per household and priority households get 5 kg ration per person okay eat right india movement it was started by food safety and standards authority of india fssai it aims to transform the food ecosystem in the country and usher in a culture of safe healthy and sustainable food processes and practices okay distribution national food security act and fsa 2013 it aims to ensure people's food and nutritional security by assuring access to a sufficient quantity of high quality food on sustain at sustainable reasonable price then comes provide subsidized food grains to 75% of india's rural population and 50% of urban population under targeted pds national food security act 2013 subsidized food grains to 75% of india's rural population plus 50% of India's urban population through targeted PDS. Then, Antodaya Anna Yojana. It is one of the public distribution system schemes in India implemented from 2000 to ensure food security and to create hunger free India promoting sustainable local food systems for a better rural urban connected India project it aims to improve people's access to food that is clean safe and nutritious to achieve its goal it seeks to raise awareness among consumer groups collaborate with farmer producer organizations and to ensure fair prices oh yeah okay produce etc now what is zero hunger challenge it was launched by the then un secretary general at rio 20 conference on sustainable development in brazil in 2012 it addresses five elements critical for eradication of hunger and malnutrition these are all food ecosystems are from sustainable production to consumption and end to rural poverty double small and scale produce and income and productivity adapt all food systems to eliminate loss or waste of food access adequate food and health diets for all people all year round and end to malnutrition in all forms it began in india in 2017 to improve agricultural health and nutrition in high level task force hltf on global food and nutrition security hltf was established by the united nations security general ban ki moon in 2008 excuse me i just have a sip of water it aims to promote a comprehensive and unified response of the international community 
who achieves global food and nutrition security then food and land use coalition flu it is a self governing coalition composed of over 30 organizations established to transform the global food and land use systems to establish in 2017 at united nations general assembly then fao unep sustainable food systems program it was started in 2011 with support from government of switzerland its objective is to reduce the pollution intensity of food systems from production to consumption and address issues of food and nutrition security now what measures have been taken to address the challenges associated with food system at national level we have at production level we have national mission for sustainable agriculture climate smart agriculture india digital ecosystem for agricultural framework national food security mission integrated schemes in all seeds pulses palm and maize so we have nmsa csa idea and fsm iso pom in processing we have mega food park scheme production linked incentive scheme for food processing in uh, food processing industry then foreign direct investment food irradiation centers e tribe india movement distribution we have national food security act nfsa then antodaya anna yojana in promoting sustainable local food system at <coughs> global level we have zero hunger challenge high level task force hltf on global food security and nutrition security food and land use coalition fao unep sustainable food systems program that's basically this summary of all the policies plus measures remember it for needs now how technology is impacting global food system in recent years technology continues to make advancements and revolutionize the food industry to streamline the production process and benefit the environment some of the emerging technologies associated with food systems include robotics and machines they ensure quality and affordability of food as well as help with planting harvesting and packaging task machine learning tech can analyze and optimize land and water usage for different crops and farms depending on the condition food harvesting robots can keep workers safe from harmful working conditions in the case of hazards such as wildfires uh, and drones agricultural industry is incorporating drones for effective management of precision farming operations spraying of pesticides irrigation etc and satellite technology to provide satellite imagery to monitor crop growth weather patterns and prevent soil degradation to increase efficiency on the farm ai system artificial intelligence ai system have been integrated into machines that can sense flavors for food safety quality and deep analysis of product composition create accurate forecast to manage inventory and pricing 3d food printing it allows food customization according to their choice as it helps to determine the exact quantity of vitamins carbohydrates etc saves both time and energy when it comes to exp- experimenting with different types of food dishes blockchain technology blockchain can be used to verify the authenticity of food products improve food safety quality control and prevent food fraud genetically modified organisms gmos they can help to increase food production nutrient enrichment to address nutrient deficiency and develop pest resistant crops such as bt cotton lab based lab based food systems although still in the initial stages of development cultured foods like synthetic chocolate or lab grown meat offer an alternative to total reliance on increasingly delicate and unpredictable supply chains they are also touted as one of the viable sources of alternative proteins they offer advantages like zero animal cruelty 
less saturated fats, less antibiotics resistance, cheaper source of protein diet, etc. Now, impact of technology on food system. Increase efficiency and productivity in food production from planting and harvesting to manufacturing and packaging. Businesses can track and monitor the environmental impact and make changes to reduce the carbon footprint. Easier to track food safety, their quality and identify and recall contaminated products. Enhanced customer experience from online ordering and delivery to in-store technology like self-checkout and digital menus. How healthy are alternative proteins? We have seen alternative proteins on YouTube videos, but how healthy are they? Food, let's see the pros. Food borne diseases are eliminated and nutritional composition can be tailored. More fiber and less saturated fat than meat. Comparable protein content to meat. Good source of protein. Polyunsaturated fatty acids, vitamins and minerals, good source of protein, okay, same way. Uh, source of vitamin B2 and iodine, okay. Cons, complex structure of meat is replicated using additives, plant-based compounds reduce protein digestibility. That is one factor we are worried about. Plant based compounds reduce protein digestibility. Okay. And can contain high amounts of added fat and sodium. Nutritional values vary. Possibility of allergy. There is always that possibility. Low raw digestibility and may contain heavy metals. Nutritional values may vary. Major con is this. That it reduces protein digestibility. Now role of women in achieving sustainable food systems. Women are active participants in the food system. They are farmers, producers, processors, distributors, researchers, vendors, cookers and consumers. They are responsible for half of the world's food production and in most developing countries, they produce between 60 to 80 percent of food. Still, their contributions are often not consistently recognized. As per UN Food and Agricultural Organization FAO, women may make up at least 43% of agricultural workforce in developing countries. Moreover, women are instrumental in fight against hunger and malnutrition and in making food systems more productive and sustainable. What are the obstacles faced by women in sustainable food system? Land. Land is predominantly owned by men and transferred intergenerationally to males. Therefore, women lack access to land, water rights and livestock. Not even 2% of land is owned by women. Credit. Women have less access to credit and control over finances resources. This in turn limits their ability to purchase agricultural tools, seeds, fertilizers or higher labor that could increase their crop production. Education. Women and girls do not receive adequate education and training opportunities which resulted into decreased agricultural productivity and increased poverty and malnutrition. Extension Services 5% of women receive agricultural extension services worldwide. Most of it are focused on cash crops rather than food and subsistence crops which are primary concern of women farmers and key to food security. Technology Women farmers' roles and needs are ignored when devising technology which may cause labor displacement or increased workload. For instance, many farm mechanization equipment like tractors are made by keeping men in mind and not women. Because they are more heavy, not that handy for women to use. Now measures to empower women to attain sustainable food system. Access to land. Incentivizing extending land titles to women and implementing awareness campaigns to inform women about their rights with respect to land ownership. Finance. 
facilitate lending to women entrepreneurs working in agriculture, make financial services more accessible to women. Technology, ensure that agricultural programs consider the needs and preferences of both men and women when developing and introducing new varieties and technologies. Policy making, review and reorient government policies to ensure the problems constraining role of women in food security are addressed. Capacity building, strengthening productive and entrepreneurial capacities of women through tailor-made training and improved science service provisions. A 3R framework in women's visibility within food system. Recognize, reinforce, and remove. So we can make a triangle like this, or we can make like this. Recognize. Um, I'll say let's make a circle. Recognize. So what are the three R's? No, no, let's make a pretty circle that we remember it for our exams. Recognize. Reinforce. Remove. These are the three R framework to catalyzing women's visibility within food system. Recognize women's contribution to food system. Reinforce women's access and agency within food system and remove barriers to women's equitable participation and leadership. If women have farmers had the same access to tools and credit, there would be up to 150 million fewer hungry people. Oh my God. Now, what is the way ahead to build resilient food systems for future? To improve the efficacy of food systems and ensure economic, social development, environmental sustainability of future generations, transformations are required in agricultural systems. These include climate solutions from sustainable agriculture. In wake of climate change, there is need to transform agricultural systems and help farmers build resilience against future environmental and economic shocks. Reducing food loss and waste, which accounts for 8% of greenhouse emissions globally. So, food loss and waste account for 8% of greenhouse gas emissions globally. Then agroforestry, incorporating the cultivation and conservation of trees and crop plants and pastures can cut emissions by creating additional carbon sinks on farms. Better soil management on farms, practices such as reduced tillage can keep carbon in the soil with increasing productivity. So what is a better soil management practice? Reduced Tillage keeps carbon in the soil while increasing so if we are talking about tillage what does tillage even mean because there was a question in prelims in PYQs about tillage or whether it helps in reducing carbon in the soil or not. <laughs> so let's see what tillage is first of all. Tillage meaning via Google is the preparation of land for growing crops. Tillage is uh, planting and cultivation of is manipulation of the soil into a desired condition by mechanical means. I think it's pul uh, pulverization. We are tilling it. So better practices reduce tillage can keep carbon in the soil 
while increasing productivity they don't want you to till the soil what is the main purpose of tillage managing crop residue preparing a seed bed okay plowing is the more intense version of tilling okay what are the benefits of tillage excellent erosion control soil moisture conservation builds tillage cones so let's see the advantages and disadvantages of tillage major soil erosion okay so no till adoption can reduce soil erosion increase soil biological activity and increase soil organic matter these benefits can lead to additional economic gains for farmers over time so that's why they want you to tillage destroys or depletes soils aggregate stability structure pore space water holding capacity okay So we can write here tillage destroys soils stability. I thought tilling was good. Structure pore space etc. So what do they want? They want reduced tillage. This is important. You just have to remember it. Reduced tillage is what we want because obviously farmers would like to till more, that it becomes easier for seed plantation and all. But we don't want much tillage of the soil. We want to keep carbon in the soil. while increasing productivity how productivity is increased uh, because uh, we are not removing the nutrient storage ability of the soil we are not removing the um there are many things that the soil contains many nutrients the top portion of the soil has various nutritional factors which which gets destroyed while tilling so the benefits of no tilling farming less machinery investment reduce input cost fewer trips across the field less labor needed better water usage lower nutrients needs and ability to farm more acres i never knew this it's such a good thing we will talk about i think we should talk about tillage right now this tillage is an important factor which was asked in prelims and it is an important topic which i have usually ignored because obviously i am a foolish person let's talk about tillage what are the advantages and disadvantages of tillage so tillage we know what tillage is let's just write about the 
pros and cons here i'm going to write pros here i'm going to write cons pros are tillage we are writing about reduced tillage pros are breaks up compacted soil that's the reason why soil is tilled adds air adds air to organic matter that's why we don't talk about no tilling but less tilling reduced tilling because there are some advantages helps eliminate pest helps eliminate pests there are some advantages and there are some disadvantages also which is the reason we want to reduce tillage that is it destroys soil structure then uh, uh, reduce the more we till the more we make soil susceptible to compaction okay more prone to compaction that means the more we till the more we need to till then uh, reduces moisture retention then uh, brings dormant weed to the surface obviously the thing we talked about it releases carbon um releases carbon from the soil i found it quite funny it brings dormant weed to the surface and the pros was help eliminate pests when with basically it is that tilling is <laughs> the very thing <laughs> it start it was created to destroy it's doing the very thing so uh, what was the phrase you have become the exact thing you were meant to destroy village you were meant to destroy pests and weeds but what are you doing you are making soil more susceptible to compaction susceptible to more weeding <laughs> that's funny <laughs> okay moving on a five course menu of solutions can reduce agricultural emissions by more than 70% okay now what does it uh, reduce food uh, tired phase of crop based biofuels what do they want do they want crop based biofuels do they don't want it this is also a very contentious thing biofuel pros and cons i always thought that bio uh, crop biofuel was a good thing because we want crop based biofuel but now they are saying that we have to phase it out <laughs> why didn't they why didn't they why didn't they bring it in the first place let's talk about it crop biofuel yeah we, we have to know um so we will say pros here and 
and cons here. Pros, it's an efficient fuel. Okay. We do know that it's a less flammable compared to fossil disease, fossil diesel. Um, less, yeah, obviously, it's cost benefit. Um, potential of becoming cheaper. Hmm. Durability of vehicle's engine. Durability of vehicle's engine. Okay, it has a higher seating. It has a higher seating. And better lubricating and better lubricating properties. Okay. I think it's going to be a long one. Okay. Then easy to source, obviously. It's easy to source. We have seen that already. Why is it easy to source? Because we use crop residues or we actually are farming crops for biodiesel. So it is easy to source because it's crop based. It happens to be non-renewable gasoline. Okay. So yeah, it will end it sometimes. Biofuels are made up from many different sources such as manure, waste from crops, other byproducts, algae, and plants grown specifically for the fuel. Now, we are concerned for this part plants grown specifically for the fuel. That's why we will talk about the quartz oil. It's renewable, a major factor. Then, uh, reduce greenhouse gases and compared with gasoline. Greenhouse gases. Huh. Okay, economic security. Huge con. Economic. Like India, we don't have a huge reservoir of crude oil. So, for us to. Um, it's kind of a replacement of fuel which we would have imported. If we start shifting towards biofuel, we can reduce our dependence on fossil fuels which we don't have abundance of. Yes. Reduce dependence on foreign oil. Obviously. We need a better this one. I need kind of, yeah, I need shapes. I need line, a proper line over. Yeah, this is nice. Okay. Then eighth one is. Yeah. Eighth one is reduce dependence on foreign oil okay yeah we have already discussed it since it will be a locally grown crop it can reduce the nation's dependence on fossil fuels which yes we are usually importing it we don't have a reservoir for it huge reservoir we don't have it lower level of pollution we have already discussed it but no issues Lower levels of pollution. Uh, 
they release lower levels of carbon dioxide and other emissions when burned compared to standard diesel it is also usually results in a significant reduction in pm emissions although the production of biofuels create carbon dioxide as a by product it is frequently used to grow the plants that will be converted into fuel this allows it to become something close to a self sustaining system besides biofuels are biodegradable that reduces the possibility of soil contamination and contamination of underground water during transportation storage or usage now we have discussed the pros now let's talk about cons or the disadvantages high cost of production when we said cost benefit we talked about a long term investment will reap benefits in future but right now yeah it is high costing thing investment it's a bulk up investment so high cost of production is there why do they want us to phase it out monoculture what does monoculture mean mono oh yeah 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 monoculture refers to the practice of producing the same crops crops year after year rather than producing various crops through a farmer's fields over time so this might seem as an attractive or lucrative uh, thing for a farmer so they might grow the same crop every year for biofuel and that will deprive the soil nutrients hmm use of fertilizers use of fertilizers biofuels are produced from crops and these crops need fertilizers to grow the downside of using fertilizer is that they can be harmful effects on the surrounding environment and may cause water pollution yeah and shortage of food and this is the reason why we want to phase out crop based biofuel uh, we do want algae based biofuel and other products based waste based biofuel we want to phase out crop based biofuel actually we are not talking about only crop based biofuel but yeah we are talking about crop based biofuel yeah. shortage of food Yeah, obviously if you are if the farmer is producing crop for biofuel we will be shifting our land from um wheat and rice and other eatable to biofuel production that means we will be shifting from food grains to cash crop this will be a cash crop right yeah because even though waste material from plants could be used as raw material this will need a lot of crop and farmers will produce crops for biofuel it will get them more money so existing land used for biofuels may not cause an acute shortage of food however it will definitely put pressure on the current growth of crops and uh, growing use of biofuels may just mean a rise in food prices as well algae is a good option but it grows in very inhospitable regions and has a limited impact on land use how the problem with algae is what to use okay fifth is industrial pollution carbon footprint of biofuel is less than traditional forms of fuel when burned however the process with which <coughs> they are produced makes up for that production is largely dependent on lots of water and oil yes water use obviously if you are producing crop you will be using water hmm future rise in prices we have already How can it be post things? What 
If the land is used to grow a biofuel feedstock, it has to be cleared of native vegetation, which then leads to ecological damage done in three ways. Okay, it destroys local habitat, animal dwellings, microsystems, reduces overall health of natural resources. Uh, yeah, carbon debt is also there. Global warming. Yeah, that's why we are trying to phase it out. We're not trying to phase it out, though. We're trying to incorporate it. It's a clash of the titans. Weather problem. How is it a weather problem? Okay. Oh, biofuel is less suitable for use in. I didn't know that. Biofuel is. Less suitable for use in low temperatures. That is interesting. Mm. It also increases microbial growth in engines. Ooh, another downside. It causes micro. Probial infection in engine and clocks engine filters. Oh my god! Okay, so yeah, it was a good one. That's why we are trying to phase it out. Got it. We're not trying to phase it out, but yes, this is going to happen. Pretty sure. Okay. And achieve replacement level fertility rates, increase crop yields, plant existing crop. Uh, okay. <laughs> we have to. Okay, let's start. Increase uh, pasture productivity, improve wild fisheries management, increase aquaculture productivity, reduce growth in demand for food and other agriculture products. Increase okay. Reduce GHG emissions from agriculture production. Reduce enteric fermentation. Improve manure management. Reduce emissions from manure left on pasture. Increase nitrogen use efficiency. Improve rice management and breeds. Reduce energy emissions. Restore peatlands. Uh, protect and restore natural ecosystem. Okay. Moving on. Address triple challenge. Globally, food systems need to meet the triple challenge. What is the triple challenge? Refer image. You cannot see the triple challenge. Oh, the triple challenge. Environmental sustainability, climate change, production systems, resilience, food and nutrition security, food availability, access to food, health, diet, etc. Livelihoods, decent jobs, income growth, food expenditure. Okay. Food and nutrition security. Providing sufficient, safe and nutritious food to a world population that is expected to approach 10 billion in 2050. Oh my god. <laughs> Why are we growing so fast? Okay, the livelihood. Providing incomes to more than 500 million farmers. What? Okay. And others in the food chain in promoting rural development. Then common food policy. There is a need of CFP addressing food production, farming, trade, as well as food and environmental quality, health, resource, and land management, ecology, social and cultural values, and help reshape the entire agricultural and food market chain. Restructuring. Agricultural support, shifting away from market price support to direct payment 
to farmers can improve production and promote sustainable practices for example due to european union common agricultural policy a 20% reduction in fertilizer use and increased seed production by 28% was witnessed from 1990 to 2015 okay it was a good practice that happened it's a good practice okay nitrous oxide emissions from agricultural soils were also reduced by 17% from 1990 to 2015 coordination there is a need to develop links between agricultural nutritional and health research centers both nationally and globally to deliver solutions customized to local needs and realities investment investing in sustainable agricultural techniques by adopting measures to strengthen and develop resilient food supply chains resource use efficiency and eco friendly food packaging ensure inclusive and equitable food systems there is a need to measure and address the drivers causes of inequity in access to food through inclusive equitable and accessible creation and dissemination of information related to domestic and global food security also to create inclusive and sustainable growth the productivity and efficiency of the regional food system must be improved now a new governance architecture for sustainable food system we need ensuring access to land water and healthy soils attraction extraction to reg- regenerative land and resource use soil degradation to living soils and sustainable land development to farming first of rebuilding climate resilient healthy agrosystems top down techno fixers to bottom up farmer led innovation uh, okay we need to write that top down techno fixers to bottom up farmer led innovation agri business dependency to farmer autonomy chemical intensive monoculture to diversified agroecological systems then promoting sufficient healthy and sustainable diets for all obesogenic environment to healthy food environments low cost to true cost food systems making the healthy option the easiest making the healthy option is the easiest that is the goal we should go for building fairer shorter and cleaner supply chains designing low waste low plastic food systems volume to value exploitative conditions to sustainable livelihoods putting trade in the service of sustainable development free trade agreements to sustainable trade agreement investor protections to citizen protections and corporate accountability export orientation and commodity specialization to diversify territorial market it's a really good one okay so conclusion food system being complex in nature necessitates a holistic and co- coordinated approach uh, to ensure food and nutrition security for all india needs a new paradigm where the food system approach is in coherence across all sectors like agriculture food health trade and environment an integrated and stable policy framework with budgetary support is essential to make the food production and consumption sustainable okay here is the um, summary kind of for mains if you want topic at glance but otherwise thank you for staying with me till the end and See you on next time.